I'm here in the nursery Upland Woodland, uh, at least that's its temporary name for right now, where uh, volunteers about two years ago, uh, maybe about a year and a half ago, now uh, removed a whole bunch of honeysuckle, uh, bush honeysuckle in here. And Adam just very recently sprayed out all the winter creeper down on the ground that was growing underneath the bush honeysuckle. And so today I'm here with a student researcher, Sarah Leader. You guys might know her mom, one of our volunteers, Cindy Leader. So Sarah, what are you doing in these woods? Well, I'm inventorying all the trees and shrubs here. Why are you doing that? Uh, we're looking at how the composition may change and diversity pre and post removing all the invasive species in here. Well, that's really cool. Uh, what do you hope to get out of this? Uh, personally, I hope to learn how to identify trees in the wintertime and get a, a better feeling for some some good old bottomland uh, forest here. Like that giant silver maple right there? Like that giant silver maple. Just identified him today. That's cool. Uh, got a favorite tree yet? I would have to say the beautiful American sycamore over here. Something about that white bark in the midwinter time is just pretty nice. They are awesome. Before coming here, I had identified trees in Wisconsin and only by their leaves. So I'm hoping to learn how to identify trees in the wintertime along with shrubs um, and to understand the composition and ecology of bottomland forests a little better. Cool. Um, what's the project that you're working on entail here? So we're going to inventory uh, every single tree and shrub right in the nursery area. All right, so you're getting everything as close to species as possible, I'm assuming? Yes, yes, uh, and we're measuring the DBH of trees. Oh, well, how do you go about doing that? Well, you have this DBH tape here, and you, um... Go uh, all the way around the tree. About 1.4 meters off the ground and then you measure the DBH. It tells you right there what the diameter of the tree is. That's awesome. You don't actually have to do all the math. Measure it with a regular measuring tape Thank and you. then divide by pi. Just too much, too much math out here. <laughs> awesome. Well, we look forward to seeing the progress over this. Thank you. <laughs> so I'm here with Sarah to get an update on how her tree inventory is doing. She's in her last few days of the inventory. All right, Sarah. So how is it going? You've had about three weeks on this inventory and your last day is tomorrow uh, before heading off to a really cool internship with the Nature Conservancy in Nebraska. Uh, I'm very jealous um, with the famous Chris Helzer, the prairie ecologist, <laughs> if anybody's uh, familiar with him and has read his blog or follows him on social media. But anyways, uh, Sarah, what have you gained from this experience inventorying all these trees here in Missouri with your previous work being from Wisconsin, correct? Yeah. Uh, so, so what have you gained from this experience? And uh, well, let's just hear a little bit about that first. Well, before um, when I was looking at trees, I would mostly look at the leaves and sometimes the bark. But now I see how much uh, how much you can identify trees just from their bark and their habit and their buds. Um, and if you can do that in the winter time, then you can do that year round. So I think that's a pretty valuable thing to learn. Uh, I'm excited about taking with me. It is. It is the best time of year to learn your trees because then you'll always be able to find those little details to identify them. Um, so here in this uh, upper nurse, nursery woodland, uh, what would you say is one of the most interesting finds that you've come across? There's a, a crab apple in the middle of the woodland that we weren't expecting seeing. That maybe it might be a hawthorn, but since there are no thorns, I'm thinking it's a crab apple, and that hasn't been confirmed yet, but it was an interesting thing to see. 
yeah, it was just right in the middle of the woodland. Um, very uh, upright and narrow, so it's not like the typical crab apples you see pe planted in people's yards. Um, what do you think is the most dominant tree so far in this inventory? I would say probably the silver maple or the box elder maple, which we have right here. Uh, box elders are kind of fun because you can knit, you can tell them apart easily. They have opposite branching and they have green stems with little red buds on the end that make them pretty distinct. Bright green stems and stands out against the snow too. Just beautiful. What do you hope that we can do before you head out? What do you hope we can do with some of the data that you've collected? I'm hoping we can see the diversity. Uh, I'm interested in how even the diversity is because I know there are quite a few species, but um, like we just said, the box elder and the silver maple seem to be pretty dominant. So it might not be the most even species composition. I'm also interested in putting these uh, the information into iTree, which can tell you um, how much this area controls erosion and other things like that. Cool. All right. Well, thank you so much, Sarah. Uh, everybody is going to be very interested to hear how this turns out, and I will keep them all updated. Thank you so much. <laughs>
were in between the range of 6 to 12 inches in diameter. So fairly large, but some uh, it's still very young trees, uh, like this tree that you would see behind me here. So not big monstrous trees, uh, but there were a few big, big silver maples and uh, some sycamores here inside this little section of woodland. Um, and I did want to give you a little bit of numbers for the trees themselves. Uh, we couldn't identify everything to species, so uh, just to genus, we're, we are looking at uh, 67 maples, 37 elms, 23 black locust. Um, let's see, what is the next highest? Uh, 10 hackberries, 9 sassafras, 7 ash, 6 oaks, 6 types of cherries and plums, um, 6 mulberries, 5 red buds, 5 black walnuts, 4 American sycamores, four dogwoods, three types of crab apple, three sweet gums, two buckeyes, one honey locust, and that one invasive tree I was mentioning earlier, uh, that one tree of heaven. Uh, however, uh, the six mulberries are more than likely all white mulberries, which are also invasive species, but they are unf unfortunately uh, very uh, prominent in the St. Louis urban area. So a lot of people will see mulberries and think that it's a good thing, but unfortunately most of the ones you see around here are the white mulberry. So yeah, a, a lot of really cool trees. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that update on Sarah's research. See you guys soon. snow is coming down good outside right now. Well guys, you are not going to believe what I found when I sat down at my desk to start working on my computer. I found a note. It's a special note. It says, Dear James, you're invited on a scavenger hunt. I love scavenger hunts. It says, clue number one, visit a contender among trees. I don't know about you guys, but I think I already have an idea of where to go looking. Let's go. All bundled up out here in the snow. The sun's actually starting to peek out a little bit. And if you didn't notice, uh, my aunt made me this nice orange scarf for Christmas. Well, what do you guys think? I think this is where the clue was leading me. Our state champion box elder tree. I think that's the contender they were talking about. So let's let's check it out. Let's see if uh, I'm right.
hopefully see you guys next week uh, in person. But while we're here, let's talk about probably my favorite tree for when it snows. Just look at all these cool branches, low, horizontal, catching all that snow. It's really cool. And this makes me think about my other favorite snow-covered trees here at Lissinger. Let's go take a look at those. One of my favorites on site has to be the butternut that we have that's outstretching over the South Prairie with those long horizontal branches. They catch so much snow. It's just a favorite of mine to walk underneath during this time of year and how the snow collects in the crotches, of the branches up against the trunk. And my third favorite has to be the planting of three American beech trees up near the glass house by the North Prairie. They just catch so much snow on all those many branches. And the youngest and smallest planting is the one that still holds on to lots of its leaves over winter and can catch so much more snow. I hope you guys enjoyed our look at some of the really nice snow covered trees here at Litzinger. If you guys have a favorite snow covered tree, uh, send me an email, let me know, and maybe I'll talk about it in a future video if I get a bunch of responses. I'll talk to you guys later.